First note of truth, suffering. I've jacked off countless times in my 25 years, but this will be by far the strangest of them all. Stranger than me and my best friend at 13 walking into the Oregon Hills above Ashland and standing on opposite sides of a tree so that we couldn't look, masturbating for the crown of quickest and farthest I lost. <laughs> Stranger than my first girlfriend who didn't want to actually ever have sex with me, but wanted to sit on her mother's Kenmore dryer while I sat between her legs facing the other direction. She reached around and gave me a hand job telling me to come quick before she did. Again, I lost. <laughs> I could go on, but I assume the point's been made. So sitting with Michelle in a fluffy pink robe and Maria sipping a huge glass of red wine while a sterilized, earth-balanced plastic container and a syringe are ceremoniously laid out on a lace doily is about as much of a turn-on as dinner with my mother. <laughs> Maria breaks the ice. You know, I wonder what the Buddha would say about all this situation. Is this, is this an example of right actions in the Eightfold Path? <laughs> she sips her wine smugly. Michelle says, Maria, chill out. Let's not mix business with, well, the anarchist study group. It's not fun. <laughs> True, I confess. This really is not pleasure or fun. Suddenly, Marie smiles, leans in, and says in her best very white voice, what can we do to make you feel more aroused? <laughs> Michelle laughs. You want us to make out? like Madonna and Britney. I'm shocked that her voice actually gets deeper. No, I laugh. God, no. You mean Buddha no, Marie jokes. Back to normal. You really didn't read the book yet, did you, Maria? Michelle asks. It's clear she didn't, I said, because if she did, she'd know the whole point of Buddhism. It's not about leaders or gods, but about individuals. I wink at Michelle, feeling nervous and glad for the change of subject. Well now, Maria continues in her faux baritone, perhaps we could read passages aloud and light some incense. Would that get you aroused? Stop it, seriously, Michelle says, and picks up her glass of sparkly water she doesn't drink, and sinks back into the couch, a tight rectangular sofa, soft blue with brown throw pillows. I remember the first time I was here, the night of the shooting in the park, and that's in issue three if you're interested, it's over there. It was the first time we'd all hung out outside of the study group. It was weird because it was a completely sober experience as well. No whiskey, which I love. No wine for Sammy, my ex-girlfriend. No beer for Oren or Renee. It was sparkly water all around. But after that evening, we started hanging out as friends. In some ways, it was hanging out with Michelle on this couch that helped me decide that I needed to come out. And on this couch, she asked me to donate sperm to her and Maria. And here I am again on this couch, feeling uncomfortable and nervous. Okay, I say, let's just get to business. Uh, you know, I really thought this would be slightly more scientific than it really is. I reach to pick up the empty container when Michelle adds, well, hold on a second. There are a few other things we need to talk about. Uh, and plus, we want it as clean on the inside as possible. Maria then had unfolded a piece of paper. Okay, this is the instructions I got on how to collect semen. I got them for that super cute Chicana whose partner just got pregnant, so we can assume they work. Michelle grins hungrily at Maria and sits at attention. So, if you need help with any of these things, just let us know. First, Maria continues, you wash the head of the penis with an antiseptic wipe. <laughs> they both look up at me. Uh, I can do that for myself, thank you. It says you're supposed to not have smoked or drank alcohol in the last 48 hours. They both look up at me reproachfully. Yes, you had both texted me numerous times, I haven't. And, Maria says, no seminal discharge in the last 48 hours. They both look up at me again. Uh, you know, you guys are asking for a lot. That, it's not like I have someone I can fool around with, but no masturbation even. That's just painful. I'm 25. And why on earth do they call it seminal discharge? <laughs> Maria sips wine and smiles and says, you know, I understand what you're talking about, uh, Chad. I'm 37, and I don't think I could go a day without vaginal discharge. <laughs> Michelle spits up her drink back into her glass, and I groan. Even Maria has a look of disgust on her face. Yeah, she says, that came out wrong. We all chuckle nervously, releasing some tension. Well, thank you very much, Chad, Michelle says, and please drink your wine now because I can't do anything beyond this point. But not too much because we have to do this again for the next few days. Maria looks at the paper. Finally, she says, and just try and collect everything into the container. She looks up, snaps the paper loudly, and places it back on the table, leans back, 
I should be a doctor, she says. I stand, grab the earth balance container, and walk to the bathroom. I close the door, flip the light, and look in the mirror. I have not shaved my beard in a while, my skin oily from biking around all day, my hands shaded black from working a few hours in the bike shop on Telegraph. I wash them, feel the warm water and slickness of the soap. It's almost ritualistic, church-like, spiritual. I wash my hands, I splash my face, I drop my drawers, I sit on the toilet, I breathe in and deeply. I tell myself again, I thought this process would have been a little bit more scientific, but it is kind of DIY, which I like. In the room outside, I know they have the lights low and candles going. The plan is for me to make my donation into the cup and leave them to inject it into her uterus while she also has an orgasm, which will help with insemination. I won't stay around for that. I remember helping Sammy have an orgasm. Thinking of her, I, th I feel myself getting excited, smile and lean back and think of her standing over me, waiting for me to make her come, eyes desperate, deviant. I close my eyes and in my fantasy there is a line behind her of naked people, men and women, all thin and lean and hungry, one after another. There's so many of them, I don't know how I can satisfy them all. I know some will leave dissatisfied. I think of the inevitable way we will let some people down. I think of the ways we will all suffer. I imagine announcing, I am sorry, so sorry to all of them as I carefully and quietly ejaculate into the earth balance container. I close it up, walk into the candlelit room. Michelle is now sprawled out on the sofa. Maria is standing, arms outstretched, her eyes say it all. I hand the container to her and walk out alone into the night to my bike locked up tightly to the stop sign outside of their apartment in South Berkeley. I know that's not what the Buddha meant about suffering in the world, but it's my version, at least for today. Thank you. So if you want to be more